What's up everyone and welcome back to the Draft Dynasty channel. Today we have another scouting report, this time Jan Mishak. And he was highly requested in the voting in the last video. He won easily, he was the favorite one. Let's take a quick look at his profile. He is one of the youngest players in the draft, born in June. He's still only 17 years old. He's now 6 foot, but I think earlier in the year he was shorter than that. Probably grew a few inches during the year. 181 pounds, so he's pretty mature physically, he's getting stronger. And overall, he's a player that is way ahead of his development curve for, for his age. Uh, he's already playing a pro style game. Let's take a look at his stat. So he played in the Czech League earlier in the year and at the end in the OHL. He finished with 9 points in 26 games in the Pro League in Republic Czech, which is pretty impressive for his age. And at the end of the year, he played in the OHL and he did pretty well on a weaker team. And I would like to use the premium tool on Elite Prospect because I think many people don't realize how good of a season he had last year in the Czech League, especially for a draft minus one. And since he's born in June, he was pretty young. Let's see how he does. So minimum 20 games the last 20 years. I already ranked them. And he is first for point per game. And you can pause it there and look at the name. There's a few good ones. Pavel Zaka, Zadina, Martin Cut, Jacob Loco. So there's a few good names. And he really had a crazy good uh, D-1 season. And for some reason, he flew under the radar for most of the year. Uh, until he came to the North America in the OHL. But until that point, he was really underrated. And even uh, Craig Button, I think, on his list. After, after the World Junior, he pulled up his list and... Isaac was 61, which I think was a real joke. He should have been in the first round uh, earlier than, than that. With all that said, let's dive into the footage. And you will be looking at the number 19 most of the time when he's playing in the OHL. Most of the clip are from the OHL. I have a few in there that are from the World Junior Championship and a little bit from the Alenka, but most of them are going to be from the OHL. As usual, let's start with the thing I like the most about his game. And for him, I think this is going to be the first time I have this category as the thing I like the most but on the penalty killing he was a beast uh, I was extremely impressed he kind of have everything to be a good guy on the penalty killing he has a good motor and good speed as well so he's very dangerous and he's not shy to uh, try and go for the offense as well if there's an opening uh, he has the skating to counter attack and try something offensively and this is kind of the new age uh, kind of penalty killing the coaches now are putting more skills player on the ice to try and generate a little bit of offense and the thinking is right I mean if the puck is on the other side it's not on your zone so I mean it makes sense one thing that you will notice in those clips is that he has a really nice uh, top speed and acceleration in a straight line he's very fast and I think this is something that he slowly improved during the year he never was a, a bad skater but now he reached a level where he's a really good skater and I think this is the physical maturity that is kicking in uh, we gotta remember that he's on the younger side he also grew a couple of inches during the year so he's not yet to his peak physically he still has some growing to do but uh, you can tell that during the year he's getting a bit stronger a bit faster and i've seen nice improvement on that side also to be good on the penalty killing you kind of need to be good defensively and i think he is very solid uh, his instinct positioning uh, his stick his anticipation so i think he's a very good defensive player that's pretty much the the main takeaway i have after watching him is that how good he could be defensively uh, in the long run i think he has a lot of potential for that reason the first half of the video is going to be about his defensive ability and toward the end we're going to switch to the offense but i really want to take the time to highlight how good he is defensively so first uh, i'm going to show clip from the penalty killing like you're seeing right now and after that it's going to be more about the defense uh, his work ethic in his zone uh, the way he can back check and break up play right, knocked down and right back up stops and waits Playing keep away are the Bulldogs. Doing a pretty good job of it. Shane down low. McShane trying back out to Tomasino. He's in a foot race for it. Dives. Meshack will start back the other way. Velotti in retreat. Meshack still with the puck. Meshack a shot. Hit the goal post. Then hits Newman in stride. Quick release off the post. Look out. General's very close to too many men, but didn't have control of the puck. Here's Kaliev. The trailer. Arthur Kaliev slides it in front. 
The next few clips are going to be at the international level and this one especially was very impressive against the USA who had a pretty legit power play, a lot of talent on the ice and he did extremely well as a 17 years old. Sometimes we kind of forget how important these special units are in the NHL but in a lot of cases it can be the difference between making or not making the playoff. So when you have a guy like that that you can for sure from start you, you already know he's going to be able to play on the, your penalty killing for many years. This gives him a very big big bump in value in my eyes and the fact that he's already a competent player defensively at 17 years old it kind of gives him a very high floor so in my eyes he's a very safe player uh, you know he's going to be able to play on the third line in the NHL and he also can play center and left wing so this gives him a bit more versatility you're going to be able to do a lot of things with him so he's, a, he's the kind of player a bit of a Swiss knife uh, you're going to be able to use him in many different situations and those are the type of player that coaches absolutely love let's transition to the defensive side and how good he is in his zone and overall defensively and the main thing I'm gonna say with him is that his effort defensively is super consistent he's always working hard I think there was a game where he, he did an amazing back check probably one of the best back check I've seen all year super intense and they were losing by six goals so this guy he only knows one way to play the game and it's high intensity there's zero ounce of cheating in his game and it's nice and refreshing to see because sometime especially in the OHL or the Canadian Hockey League. There's a lot of cheating going around for the uh, high-end skills player. And it's okay at this age to be a bit more focused on the offensive side. It's normal. But it's nice to see that he's got this part figured out already. Maybe this is the, the experience that he got playing at the pro level. Sometimes this is going to speed up the um, learning curve for the defensive ability and uh, remove a little bit of the cheating in their game. And I guess while we're speaking of intensity and cheating, I'm going to talk a little bit about his teammate uh, Arthur Kaliev because I made a pretty big mistake last year with him uh, last year I started really really late in the year watching player scouting player and I did not have the uh, OHL regular season package so I only watch him a few times in the playoff and I watch all of his highlights so this is a pretty big mistake because uh, of course if you only watch the highlight in a couple of games uh, you're gonna you can miss a lot of the important stuff and now that I've seen him play a lot this year uh, <laughs> I would never have put him so high in my ranking like I did last year I mean all the offensive skills are really nice of course but when you think about uh, the effort the involvement defensively I mean I've watched almost 450 games this year I don't think I've seen a player less involved defensively and with so little work ethic he's, he kind of feel like he's empty inside anyways I don't want to be too hard on him but it's just that most people think he's the next superstar is a sure thing and that the LA Kings have the best prospect pool because of him but I mean I would proceed carefully lower your expectation maybe because he's uh, far from being a sure shot to make it to the NHL. This is just an example of Kaliev being careless a little bit and this was such an heartbreaking loss. I think they were losing 6-0 in that game. They made a huge comeback to tie the game and eventually they still lost in overtime but it was a pretty sick comeback. All right, it's time to switch it up. So for those that have been patient and they are still here, I'm gonna reward you with some nice goals and some uh, assists and playmaking. So we're gonna shift toward more of his offensive game and for his offensive game I'm still not 100% sure what to think first I really like his shot I think it's his release is really fast and he's able to surprise goalie with uh, that quick release also he's doing a very good job in front of the net uh, with deflection just screening goalies or getting rebound he has good instinct all around the net this is something that I like with him uh, for the playmaking part of it uh, I think he's a good playmaker but I wouldn't say he's an elite playmaker uh, I'd say he's a good to very good playmaker but he's not the most creative playmaker player in the world for my NHL projection I'm very confident he's going to be able to play on the third line on the second line I'm not sure yet I think he's going to be able to play but I'm not sure if he's going to be a regular on the second line but the third line for sure penalty killing as well is going to be a go-to guy on the penalty killing the power play may be more of a second uh, power play unit but I'm not sure yet it's hard to say really maybe he has more offense in him than uh, I've seen so far now for my NHL player comparison I've decided to take players that are able to play both center and and left wing because I think maybe this is what Mishak is going to do earlier in his career. I think he's going to play both positions. So the first one it's Yanni Gord, a guy that's very quick like Mishak, excellent on the penalty killing, not exactly a point per game guy, more of a second or third line player, but he can bring some offense. The other guy I have in mind it's uh, Jaden Schwartz, a guy that's super underrated. I think he's a big reason why the Blues won the cup last year, but a guy that's very good defensively and can bring 
having some offense as well so those would be my two comparisons for the NHL for my position in my final ranking at the end of the year I'm really gonna have to spend more time working on that because right now I've been spending most of my time either watching game or trying to put video together for YouTube and every time I try to put a list together a ranking together it's kind of stressing me out because I realize there's some player I need to watch a little bit more other than I need to watch more so it's a never-ending story you always want to see more for some player but in the end there's only so much time in the day but anyways for most players I kind of have a general idea in my head of where I want them to be in my final ranking so for Jan Mizak I would say right now it would be around 18 and 25 in that range it's just that he's missing a little bit of uh, offensive upside for my liking I'm not sure 100% he's gonna be dynamic enough offensively so that's why I'm uh, dropping him down I see him more as a super safe pick than a high upside pick for the next episode I think we're gonna take a break of the scouting report and we're gonna bring back those little top 10 top 15 video so people seem to like those and they're fun for me as well give me a little bit of a break I am most likely going to do a top 10 or top 15 best playmaker for the next video I have a lot of good player in mind maybe potentially one that is not even going to get drafted I'm not sure yet but I think he's gonna make my list for uh, the best playmaker anyway I think you're gonna enjoy this one and if you don't want to miss it make sure to subscribe to the channel click on that little bell to get the notification because in the next couple of weeks i'm gonna try to make as much content as possible before the draft anyways this is it for this one see you on the next episode